In my last video I looked at the Asus PG348Q and found it to be arguably the finest gaming monitor you can buy right now, thanks to its huge 34 inch widescreen IPS panel, its 100Hz refresh rate and the inclusion of G-Sync. This time it's the turn of the Acer Predator X34. It has a near identical spec sheet and costs the same eye-watering £1,000, but there's still plenty that sets the X34 apart from its big rival. For a start it has a far simpler and in many ways nicer design. Where the Asus has strange swirling patterns, copper highlights and a ridiculously gaudy light, the Acer keeps things minimal with a striking angular base, a simple glossy black back and just a couple of hints of red to liven things up. That said, there is slightly more cohesion to the PG348Q's design. In contrast, the X34 is a bit of a mishmash. The stand has these beautiful solid metal legs, but then has these brushed metal discs that make up the rotation mechanism and a rather lackluster matte plastic section in the middle that doesn't tie in with the otherwise glossy plastic used on the back. So it's not quite a slam dunk for the Acer when it comes to design, but it maybe just has the edge. Where it definitely pulls ahead though is when it comes to its lighting options. Nine LEDs shine down from the edge of the screen onto the desk below and they can be set to one of four colours, one of six brightness levels and the light can be set to pulse or flash. The lights on both models are likely to prove unnecessary distractions for most users but the X34's approach at least has the potential to serve something of a practical purpose as it can be used to subtly light up your keyboard, mouse and general desk area. Moving on to more practical considerations, the X34 stand offers height, rotation and tilt adjustment, plus it has a cable loop at the bottom and a carry handle at the top, the latter being something the PG34AQ doesn't have. Just like the Asus though, the X34 is susceptible to tumbling off your desk if one of its metal feet moves even slightly off the edge. In comparison, Samsung SE790C has a flatter stand making for a more secure footing. At least the Acer arrives fully assembled, so that's one less thing to worry about when handling this gargantuan thousand pound bit of kit. There is still a vase amount too if you do want to use another stand. Video connectivity is just as limited as on the Asus though, thanks to the limitations of the G-Sync processor. You get just one DisplayPort and one HDMI. You do at least get a four port USB 3 hub though, and the connections are fairly easy to reach, unlike the slightly awkward hidden away arrangement on the Asus. Once physically set up though, it's the Asus that impresses slightly more. Its menu system is so quick and easy to use thanks to its joystick control. Meanwhile, the X34's on-screen display uses a line of buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel. The OSD lines up nicely with the buttons, but the overall layout and hidden nature of them means it's a far slower, less intuitive process to navigate. Plus, every now and then you hit the wrong button and turn the whole display off. What's more, the pg 34 aq arrives with less need to jump into the OSD in the first place, as its image quality is excellent right out of the box. The X34 though requires a bit of tweaking, as the colour temperature is some way off ideal. All that's required to put things right is to switch to the user colour mode and drop the blue channel by 3 or 4 points, but nonetheless the difference is there. Otherwise though, the X34 offers exceptionally good image quality. From its impressive contrast ratio of over 1000 to 1, to its ability to pick out fine gradations of colour with a delta E of just 0.59, it's about as good as you can get from an IPS monitor without getting a photography grade panel. As ever, there is IPS glow if you move off axis, and there is a smidge of backlight bleed in the corners, but neither are any more noticeable than on any other IPS display. Fire up some movies and you of course get the full advantage of that 21 by 9 aspect ratio screen, and the slight wraparound curve that fills in your peripheral vision. The curve certainly isn't necessary, but it is nice to have. Then of course there's the 100Hz refresh rate and G-Sync to think about. Like with the PG34AQ, the 100Hz option has to be enabled manually, but once done so it doesn't reduce image quality or greatly increase power consumption, so it's a no-brainer to keep it on all the time. And of course when gaming it looks fantastic. It inevitably can't compete with the fastest 144Hz TN panels for sheer instantaneous feel, but it's a noticeable and welcome step up from 60Hz. Add in G-Sync for tear-free images and a smoother frame rate and you have a fantastic gaming experience. What's more, this monitor's speakers offer impressive power and depth, utterly eclipsing the Asus. So in the end, is the Acer X34 or the Asus PG34AQ the one to get? Well, if you really don't want the hassle of having to tweak anything, then the Asus does offer slightly better image quality right out of the box. Plus, if you like its more showy design and lighting, then there's no reason not to get it. Personally though, I prefer the styling of the Acer. Plus I think I might actually use its light, unlike with the Asus, and you have the addition of the handle on the top and the slightly easier to reach USB ports. It's a close run thing, but that would be my inclination. Otherwise it's worth remembering that both really are very expensive, and you can make big savings if you're willing to drop either the Curve, the 100Hz or G-Sync. For now though, there simply isn't anything that comes close to these two monitors if you're after a huge screen that offers great image quality and gaming performance. So despite their high asking price, you're unlikely to regret taking the plunge.